Hey guys, James Hearn from jameshearn.com here with another video tutorial about some sidechain compression today. I put up a video a while back using uh, a compressor to creatively control uh, what a synth was doing and um, I thought it'd be good to show you some other uses of compressors and what you can do with compressors to, uh, to get some creative control and some rhythmic um, things going on with your, your track. So right now what I've got is something like this. So you can see I've got a real basic synth line here using vacuum inside of Pro Tools here. Um, just so, a, sort of a pad track. And you also see uh, that I've got a, uh, a stereo audio track underneath this here as well. Uh, if you look on the right hand side in my clips view over there, I've got a couple of clips, I've got a couple of audio clips um, of some rhythmic content over there that I'm going to take and I'm going to go ahead and put into my audio track. And you'll notice that this loop is not in time yet, it's not exactly a, a single measure there, so I'm going to time expand that to make that one measure, make sure I'm in grid mode, and just copy that four times, so now I've got uh, four measures of this, this single loop that I've got here. So now that I've got this loop built up here, I'm going to go into my instrument track and I'm going to insert a compressor after my virtual instrument there. So what I'll wind up with is the output of the instrument being compressed, but we're not going to use the output of the instrument to tell the compressor when to compress. Alright, next thing I need to do is go down to my audio track and create a bus send. I'll use any one of my buses and any one of my sends. Mono is fine. Uh, what's important here though is to make sure that you have the pre button selected to make sure that the send here is pre fader there. I'll go ahead and turn the fader on this up to unity gain there as well. So anything that comes out of this fader is going to be pre fader on my audio track. Now on my compressor, I'm going to make sure the key input is that exact same bus that I'm going out of with my audio track. Now I'll move over to the output of my audio track and make sure that is turned all the way down. You see how that's down all the way. I don't want to hear the output of this audio track. All I want to do is make it affect the compressor uh, and turn the compressor on and off here. So I'll make sure that the key input is turned on. I'll give it a few basic settings like turning that threshold all the way down so I can bring it up to a certain level. Now we turn that volume fader all the way down, so we're never going to hear what that loop sounds like. We can listen to the key input. So we can always turn that on to hear what the loop sounds like. So in this way, we've added some rhythmic content to this pad here. Now from here, you can take this loop and do things to it, like expand it and make this one bar loop last for four measures, and that's going to slow all this down. So you hear how you can use this to get some interesting effects. Now if you want this to work even more dramatically, you can insert a gate onto your audio track. So when I use this gate here, I'm going to make it a true gate instead of just an expander by turning the ratio all the way up, turning the range all the way down, giving it a very quick attack and release time, uh, setting the hold to zero there so that's going to have a more dramatic effect on the signal.
Now that may not sound entirely musical there, but once again, we don't really care if that sounds like, because really all we're doing is using that blast of audio to control the compressor on the pad. <laughs> And just make sure that you use your threshold and your ratio there primarily to be able to control how, um, how aggressive that sounds. Now a really great effect can be achieved if you can take a loop and basically squeeze it into a space smaller than what it's really meant for. I'm going to take this one bar loop here and make it a half of a bar and then copy this and so we can kind of see what this sounds like here. So you've got your loop basically just blasting sound rhythmically and that's what's controlling the sound of your pad. So, to sum this up, what you need to make sure you do is insert a compressor on the signal that you want affected. Make sure that you have a key input there. Make sure you turn that key input on is what a lot of people forget to turn the key input on. But set your key input to a bus. It doesn't matter. Some free bus is fine. Then make sure that you insert a bus on the audio track where that loop lives. Make sure that loop is pre-fader there. Post-fader does not work. Make sure that you have this loop send on pre-fader here and in fact what I'll do is I'll have the the send fader and the the audio fader side by side so you see that the audio fader is completely down all the way there you can insert a gate on this audio track here as well to control the the compression that sidechain compression a lot better there and now that I've got that set up, I can go back over into my clip list and import a loop of a rhythmic track there and time expand that just a little bit there as well to make sure that's one whole beat and just copy that over. <laughs> So thanks for watching. Make sure you check out my website, jameshearn, H-E-A-R-N.com. See you next time.